Speed Channel welcomes you to Darlington Raceway in South Carolina, where every Labor Day weekend, the NASCAR Winston Cup Series has come here to run the fabled and famed Southern 500. We're set for Bud Pole qualifying. Let's join Matt Yoakum. Matt Kenseth first in points, first in practice, trying to be first at the end of qualifying for the first time here in Darlington. Matt, that test session really paid off so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know how we're going to qualify or even how we'll race for sure, but uh, when we came at test, we brought the car we were going to race, then we brought this car, which we didn't think was going to run, and it was uh, about four tenths faster than the car we were going to bring. So we had a really productive test. Um, you know, I haven't had a car drive good here at Darlington for about three years, and uh, this is the best driving car I've had in a long, long time. So I'm really looking forward to getting qualifying behind us and uh, getting the best lap we can and uh, get her in a race room and see how we'll run. He was first in practice. Best star here at Darlington, ninth to Marty Snyder. A big weekend for Jeff Green, Matt. Uh, this is supposed to be the last race on his contract with DEI. Have you been given any word as to what's going to happen after this weekend, Jeff? Uh, I know I'm not driving it. You know, it's, uh, they told me this week that they're going to do something different. Just try some different things. Uh, we haven't had any really success. We've run really good at times, but run bad at times, too. So just uh, hate it from all these guys on the Penzo Chevy. We just, uh, we've grown together and we've made good friends. The friendship will still be there, always will, but uh, we still like to race together. So I hate it for them. Look forward to some more things, hopefully, in the future. The obvious question is who is going to drive it and what happens to you? Uh, I don't know who's going to drive it. I don't know if they said that yet or not, but uh, just going to look around. I'm, uh, I haven't taken a trophy home lately, so I'm going to try to do that and see if I can get in a situation where we can go out. Not that this wasn't a good situation. It was a good situation for me. Just didn't get enough time to, to prove what we could do. 27th quick in practice this morning, Mike. So that's a team looking for a sponsor and a driver for next season. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Darlington. Mike Joy, Jeff Hammond, Larry McReynolds. At the beginning of the end, the last Labor Day weekend race at Darlington, it's been such a long tradition of coming here and kind of a shame to see it go. I mean, it really is. I mean, you you know, we came here for so many years and we actually raced on Labor Day and then they moved it back to Sunday. But yeah, I mean, you hate to see tradition in, but I think it's part of our schedule's growth. And the biggest thing that's gonna end is the heat we have here today. I mean, it is over 90 degrees here today and these race cars are gonna be what they hope They'll be sliding, but they hope it's a controlled slide. Jeff, one tradition that has continued so far this weekend in Bush qualifying just concluded. At least half a dozen cars hit the wall, some of them hard. Well, I think it's something you're going to see when you go through this field right now. As you come off of turn two, as you see, there's this, the uh, one of the Bush cars. There's the 94 car, Kenny Hendrick, hitting the wall. Again, this place, I mean, it just sucks you right up into it. You get down there too low, and it just swings up out of there, and you look at turn four, a lot of guys spun out here. This right here is Kevin, I mean, Mr. Grubb right there, Kevin Grubb spinning it around. Again, this racetrack loses grip when the temperature comes up, and right now the track temperature is in excess of 130-plus degrees. So, again, that's where you're going to lose that grip, and it's very difficult to go fast when you don't have grip. We have a full field plus one, 44 cars, so there is something at stake here as one will head home today from Darlington. The first car will roll when we come back. Welcome back to Darlington Raceway, where Kevin Harvick sits at the front of the qualifying grid. Here's Matt. And we've caught up with Kurt Busch. Now, first off, tell me about the right side of your car. We put in Matt Kenseth's setup, because he tested down here, and uh, it's a little looser in my car, so it didn't work out all so hot. But he's going quick, so hopefully he's got a shot at the pole. We just got to make sure we don't slip as bad and put it on in the show. Track temperature, a big factor here. We have seen some cloud cover earlier today, but does this track change a lot, Kurt? Yeah, just obviously with temperature, it gets slick. And there's not much you can do really to tighten up the car because then you'll end up pushing in other parts of the racetrack. So it's a tough place. Former pole sitter here at Darlington looking for another, Mike. Well, you know, a red sharp, he'd probably make that fender look pretty good. He's getting ready to say, maybe even watching little brother earlier because his brother Kyle had gotten in the wall earlier in this morning's practice for the Bush cars. As we see Kevin Harvick, he'd be our first qualifier headed out, and he's sitting on the pole for the Bush race on Saturday. Let's see what kind of time he puts down right now. Six quickest in practice. Last six races, Harvick has finished in the top five. And I tell you, his qualifying's been pretty good here in five starts. In fact, it's, it was his very first three starts. He qualified and started in the top five. In the last six races, Larry, Harvick has scored more points than any Winston Cup driver, cutting 73 points out of 
Matt Kenseth's lead over the last six races. A lot like Kurt Busch about this time last year. In the last three races, he has went from seventh to third in points. And I was talking to the eight bunch, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s group, as Kevin's going to be at a 29.40. They said, we know this 29 car is coming in the points. I think Kevin's pretty much going to shut this down. You do get your two laps of qualifying here. We talked about this in the Bush qualifying earlier. Pretty much you lose so much grip that if you don't make it happen on that first lap, it's probably not going to happen. How about it, Marty? Well, Larry, Jeff Burton tested here but was 34th fastest this morning. Said he had some issues in practice. What were the issues, Jeff? Well, we had a mechanical problem at first run out. And uh, so then we, we fixed that. And then the second time out, we went a pretty good time on old tires. We went like an 80 or something on old tires, which moved us up the board. And uh, so we never got a run on stickers. And uh, when we did put our run in on, on, we did put our stickers on toward the end of practice, car behaved a lot different than it did on old tires. So we never got our sticker run until late in practice. And we just didn't make the right changes. We got the car really good on older tires, but new tires that we only picked up like a 10. So um, took that and made a bunch of changes from that. And see what that gets us. That is a convoluted way to say uh, we shouldn't be 34th by the end of the day. All right, here is the fastest man in practice. Matt Kenseth, the Winston Cup point leader. If you're looking at our pace chase right now, lights green as he goes off into turn three right there. If he can just hold it through three and four now, and hustle it back to the start finish line, he should be able to sit the fastest time. And Jeff, you heard him talking about coming down here and testing, and I talked to Robbie Reiser, his crew chief, as Matt's gonna run a 29-24 his first half. That's almost what he ran in practice, but the main reason they came down here and tested, they've been a little confused whether the in-house Roush chassis was a little better for them, and Matt's gonna shut it down as well, than the Hopkins chassis, and this is a Roush chassis. Robbie said there wasn't a big difference, but they did find out that maybe that, that they're, what Matt likes is a little better with this Roush chassis. Now, we've kidded about Kenseth's qualifying prowess, but in uh, the last 12 races, he's made five top 10 qualifying runs. And we, we, we've talked about also, Mike, that's the thing, one of the things they needed to improve on is their qualifying efforts. But that is a good lap, especially since the racetrack has continued to get hotter and hotter. Larry, one thing we want to talk about right now, early on, with the heat like it is today, the track re qualifying record is a 28.295, so I don't think that's going to be in any kind of danger of that right there going away. And actually, that was set uh, back in 1999, excuse me, back in uh, 96 by Ward And so I don't think there's any time that's going to happen because this track had just been recently repaid when that record was broken. Exactly. I was going to say there's two issues here. One, the heat. But this racetrack, the surface, it's like a piece of 80 grit sandpaper, and it just eats the tires up. And when that record was set, it was shortly yeah, after replay. Kenny Wallace started seventh here. Uh, that same race when uh, Will Burton set the track record. That's his best start at Darlington. The Stafford 2 Dodge clocks in at 29.45 for Wallace. And that's exactly what he ran in practice. He was 15th quickest in practice. Uh, and again, I don't know that you're going to see the Winston Cup cars slow down that much from practice because track temperature is very close to the same. Matt Kenseth, quickest of three so far. Tonight on Trackside, Ron Hornaday, Kenny Schrader, spring race winner, Ricky Craven, and you never know who else might stop by to see us tonight, 7 p.m. live from Darlington. Word on the street is old DW's wandering somewhere around here, so you never know. We might get him to stop by. Well, let's see. We're doing the show from turn three. Where's the restaurant outside of turn two? Hopefully he, he could come that far. Yeah. Are you trying to say he's lurking? He's lurking. Lurking. Okay. DW's always been lurking at home, and you know that. You should know he's gotten you for a million oh, dollars. Oh, yeah. Jeff Green, as you just learned at the top of the show, this is his last race for DEI. One big rumor was that Sam Hornish uh, would climb into this seat and they'd be able to retain the Pennzoil sponsorship by moving Hornish from the IRL into uh, this car. That now will not happen. Uh, as Hornish is going to, I think, Penske Marlboro Racing in the IRL to replace Jill DeFerrin, who retires at the end of this season. So big question mark, who will fill this seat next week? 
29-64 for Jeff. That's only going to make him fourth quickest out of four cars. And as you see, most of these guys are just running the one lap. Marty? Well, he was number one in practice. Number one right now, Matt Kenseth. Is a car good as, as good in qualifying, though, as it was in practice this morning? It, it was pretty decent. You know, I don't want to say too much about the track conditions because Newman's probably sitting in his trailer. and probably <laughs> I don't go think he's watching, He'll you? probably go around 2870. But no, I, for us, really, I mean, I was proud of my Smirnoff Vice for the black guys. That, uh, uh, we ran almost the same time we ran in practice, and I believe the track has to had to have backed up just a little bit. So, um, you know, we're not real lucky usually with qualifying, especially to go for poles, but that should get us, uh, you know, I think it'll get us a top five or a top ten spot. It was, a, it was a pretty good lap. Matty? Bill Elliott, five poles here in Darlington. Car Chief Jim Pullman told me a lot of changes to your Dodge. So, Bill, when do you know how good the car is? Turn one? Usually turn one. That's pretty good. You know, you, you can kind of get an idea going into turn three when you can come into the green. But turn one and two is really tells the tale. To win the last Labor Day Southern 500 pole, that would be special, wouldn't it? It would be. It'd be a great, great opportunity for somebody. I'm hoping to be the number nine Dodge. He has five here. He hopes for six later today, Mike. And he's long been a favorite of the fans here. Elliott Bank, the first ever Winston Million right here in 1985. Mark Martin, two-time pole winner at Darlington. He is second to his Roush teammate, Matt Kenseth, by just two one-hundredths. And I'm going to tell you, he has one Winston Cup win here, but boy, did this guy right here ever rewrite the Bush record books for here. Eight wins and eight poles. Now, every record you look at for the Bush series, this guy right here yep. holds. Now, give you an idea just how much hotter it is here in September than March. The qualifying record for this race is half a second slower than the absolute track record. One week ago, Kurt Busch put the bumper to Sterling Marlin going into the corner and then went on to take the checkered flag to a loud response from the fans. was not all positive response by no means. No, he's definitely a young man who's been under the microscope over the last couple of weeks. But yeah, last weekend, you know, he rose to the occasion and took care of business on the racetrack. And now he's got to start working on taking care of business off the racetrack. I guess that's all any owner could ever ask for, was a young man who can handle both ends of the, of the equation. He was 26 quickest in practice at a 29-61. And Mike, Jeff, I think the biggest thing that happened this week is his sponsor, Rubbermaid, met with Kirk and Jack Roush and concluded they'll be working on programs with Kirk to improve his relationships with the fans, with the media, and the other competitors. 29-52 for Kurt Busch, fifth of six. Matt Kenseth is quickest. Mark Martin and Kenny Harvick, or Kevin Harvick, the top three. You'll see final practice for the Winston Cup Series here at Darlington tomorrow. Happy hour is noon Eastern time live. Jeff Burton will be the fourth Roush driver to qualify, all very early up here in the order. Five top ten starts in 2003. He's also taken five provisionals, including Bristol last week. You heard Kirk Bush talking. This group did come down here and test. Now, I think they mainly worked on race runs, not really qualifying runs. This place has been pretty good to Jeff. Uh, Jeff, he's finished in the top 10 in 10 of his last 13 starts here. Yeah, he's really good here. He's got a good package that normally works here, but I think it speaks volumes of what this team is looking for, and they know this is a good racetrack for Jeff, and they don't want to let miss an opportunity to possibly get him in victory lane. And this is one of the races where Sitco uh, honors the Muscular Dystrophy Association on the side of this car uh, to raise some funds. And Jeff Burton's run is fifth quickest, 29-48. Marty? Well, it's easy to shoulda, woulda, coulda, especially after a lap here at Darlington. But, Mark Martin, uh, where could you have picked up some more time on that lap? Well, if I could have gave it more gas in the middle of three and four, you know, and gave it more gas there. But I told the guys I couldn't tell them why, but it would have wrecked. I don't know why it would have wrecked. It's not good, Mark. Well, I guess they can't help me until I tell them. But I know that if I'd have given it more gas, I'd have wrecked. I just... There just wasn't enough control there of the car. You know, wasn't it? It was tight. It was loose, but it didn't turn that great either. And I just don't think we could have tightened the car up and run any better. 
but any looser, and I could, I'd definitely run slower. It's a double-edged sword, you know. Uh, it was a good run for the Viagra team. We were 29th in practice, and maybe we'll be, maybe we'll line up better than that. The voice of experience there. Start number 35 at Darlington for Mark Martin on Sunday. Bill Elliott. Can he take the pole in that Ray Everham Dodge? He's about two tenths offered right now, and he'll be fourth on that lap, 29.43. A five-time pole sitter here. Well, I'm going to tell you just quickly on Mark Martin. He's starting to show some spunk here lately. I mean, even after getting wrecked last week, he showed some spunk in his interview and uh, starting to get a pretty good qualifying going. And I think uh, somebody's down there with our Winston Cup champion, Tony Stewart. And Larry Mack, Tony Stewart buckling up. Some good news out of the Joe Gibbs camp smoke. You want to tell everybody about it? Yeah, we uh, you know, came to an agreement with Joe Gibbs yesterday afternoon to uh, stay at Joe Gibbs Racing for another year, or no, six years actually. So uh, pretty excited. It was uh, a neat feeling to to get all the guys at the shop together in the auditorium there at Joe Gibbs Racing. And tell you had every employee there, didn't you? We had everybody there. So I uh, got up and asked them if they all minded if I stayed another six years, and, and they all applauded. So uh, it made me feel really good. It was a good feeling to call Bob Nardelli at the Home Depot and uh, call him out of a board meeting to tell him the good news, too. So we're all really excited. I'm back to the task at hand qualifying here in Darlington, 25th in practice. I know you and Zippy were talking about a lot of changes. What do you think? Uh, the one thing in my contract, they don't pay me to think anymore, luckily. So. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, we, we've got a good car here. We didn't have the bonsai run that we wanted to have, but uh, made a change and went back out. And only lost a tenth of a second on our second run, which was pretty good. So uh, hopefully we'll have a good run here. Qualified 28th in the spring and finished 10th. Mike? Good run for the Valvoline Pontiac of Johnny Benson, who had a top 10 practice speed. He was 10th in practice, and he's third right now with a 29-33. Two Fords and a Pontiac, Kenseth, Martin, and Benson, the top three. Tomorrow, the Automobile Racing Club of America is at Winchester Speedway on the high banks. Tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, live on speed. And that is a high bank race. Wow. Mike Skinner driving for Jerry Nadeau in the U.S. Army Pontiac. Boy, he is against that rev limiter right there. That's a chip in the ignition box, and that's a good thing to have with Mike Skinner because it will keep him from the overdrive in the entrance of the corner. And he got very loose at Boston Turn 4 that time right there, Larry, but didn't affect him too bad. He's fourth quickest right now in his first lap. Hey, if I'm James Ince, I think I'm going to be on that radio saying, hey, you need to bring that thing on me. That James Ince from Ryan Pemberton, I'll be saying, come on in here, buddy. That was a good lap. I believe he's going to do it. His uh, 18th place run at Bristol last week is the best finish of this car uh, since Jerry Nadeau. And I think it's kind of interesting Richmond. right there, Mike, that the uh, 10 and the 01 are both teammates, and they're both third and fourth right now. So uh, it's really good to see both those guys kind of running well. Marty? Johnny Benson backs up practice. How was that lap? It's always eventful here at Darlington, isn't it? Yeah, it'll definitely get your attention. Uh, one and two is pretty tricky. I mean, you, you know that you need to get through really good, knowing that you're going to suffer down here in three and four. And I felt like I got through that and good. Felt like I may have gave up a little bit getting in, but at the end of three, but I was more worried about coming off. So outside that, Valvoline Pontiac's pretty good shape. And uh, we'll just go from there, because it has been a struggle since we unloaded. But uh, James, James really made some changes there. It's really helped me. So. Um, We'll see how it's going to race now. Oh, it's good when you back up that practice time, isn't it, Larry Mack? Yeah, it is, especially with the way this track's starting to heat up. And uh, again, the good thing about it, these guys, when they did practice, the racetrack was already heating up. Tony Stewart on the chip and gains a little ground into turn three, and then in the middle of three and four, starts to climb. I think it's kind of funny that you think about a Winston Cup champion. Why would he need a red one? Because he knows where his marks are, but at Darlington, all the help you can get in the inside. Stewart is sixth, 29-43. Now, we mentioned earlier, Ward Burton has the track qualifying record, and the record for the September race is almost half a second slower. It was set in 1999, 28-76, and the track record holder, Kenny Irwin, Jr. In the 28 car, what's now the 38 car. Hermie Sadler. Driving an unsponsored Chevy. 44 entries here this week. 
He's competed in 16 Bush Series races. Here at Darlington, excuse me, that's a Pontiac on Chevrolet. For Sadler. This is the same car that he attempted to make the show at Bristol last week and missed it. But I know this group, especially being from Virginia, they're putting a lot of effort, energy into the Bush race and the Winston Cup race next week at Richmond, Virginia. Hermie was the slowest of the 44 cars in practice at a 31-31, so he's definitely going to have to pick it up from that. Makes you wonder if his brother gave him a pep talk before this last run, but picked up quite a bit of time as far as his practice speeds, but not going to be quite enough to get him up in the... Uh... No, nope, and that's likely uh, yep. the one car that is headed home out of the 44 here if he does not make the top 36. Matt? And somebody who's raced a lot at Winchester Speedway, Jason Leffler, and you solidified your future with this team for the rest of this year and next year, but which division do you think it'll be, Jason? Uh, I don't know. It just depends on what sponsorship performance uh, comes out of this deal, but real happy to be with Haas and C Racing. They got a good group of guys, great equipment, and uh, got Hendrick engines under the hood, so it's a, it's a good situation for me. Well, they do have Bush cars still in the shot from last year, so they could go either Bush or Winston Cup in 2004, Marty. Well, Matty, let's take care of Larry Mack's concern. You know, you're, he was your former crew chief, so he's always worried about you being on the chip on the backstretch. You know, how hard were you on the engine down there? I'll tell you what, these Hendrick motors are bad. I mean, that thing was really hauling butt when it come off a of two, and I was on that chip so early that it probably made me drive in too deep. I just stayed all over the chip, and I got down in there, and I got loose, and I stayed loose all the way through this, and I lost a lot of time through three and four, but... Uh, you know, Larry Mack probably would have been on my butt for driving in too hard, but as early as it hit the chip, I figured I was going to have to, but I lost a lot of time through there. I felt like I made up some good time over there, but, you know, we'll just take that. That's a little bit better when we ran in practice, and uh, hopefully we can get our U.S. Army Pontiac competitive for the race, and we can get, you know, start getting some things going here for us. And uh, he was still coaching you every lap, so that was good. Very nice of him to keep coaching you, huh? I love him. He's the best. <laughs> All right, there you go. Leave people loving you down here, Larry Mack. You can't beat that. I can feel the love. <laughs> All right, Tony Raines and the uh, unsponsored Bill Baumgartner, number 74, 29-62, 11th of 13. Uh, let's review the provisional situation. The cars here that are lowest in owner points are the A.J. Foyt number 50 for Larry Foyt, the Angela Sadler 02 for Hermie Sadler, and Derek Cope's number 37 are the lowest in owner points uh, of the cars that are here. All the cars that are here are eligible for provisionals, but those are the three cars that are most at risk of going home. Now, the strange thing, and we'll talk about this when we get to Larry Ford, if he had the 14 number on the car here instead of the 50 number, he would be in front of the 02 in owner points, but they have the 50 number. Can you explain that later on? We'll explain it. Okay. There's more to this story. But I'm going to tell you what I can explain. This group right here, Kenny Schrader in the 49 car, they missed Indianapolis, missed Watkins Glen two races in a row, but boy, when they came back, they come to life. I mean, he had an eighth place run at Michigan, a good top 10 run last week at Bristol, did end up 12th, but it was almost like it was a wake-up call. And, and the best part about this car, it is the 1-800-call ATT Dodge, but Carrot Top is not on it. I think they're, uh, they're gonna put a fan picture on the hood of this car. I get ready to say, I think if they took Carrot Top off the hood, it started going a lot faster. With him on the hood, he'd scare me, make me run slow. Well, 29.70 has a provisional look to it for Kenny Schrader. Matt Kenseth and Mark Martin are fastest so far. Speed Channel's coverage of Bud Pole qualifying from Darlington is brought to you by Quaker State, the power to reduce friction. 14 drivers have had a chance at the clock so far. And out comes the zero for Jason Leffler. Interesting story here. Uh, Jack Sprague was released by the Gene Haas Net Zero team. They named uh, Jason Leffler as one of their interim drivers. Leffler drives in the Craftsman Truck Series for Jim Smith. Jim Smith said, wait a minute, you've got a contract to drive this truck. You can't go drive in that Winston Cup car. Things changed. Leffler's now in the zero car. And I believe he's no longer in Jim Smith's truck. That is the story right there. And of course, Jason did run the entire Winston Cup schedule in 2001.
for Chip Ganassi. And then after that, that's when he went back to the uh, to the truck series. So who's going to drive Jim Smith's truck? We hear Jimmy Spencer. At least and in Richmond. Will. Jack Spray. Interesting. And the plot thickens. Sure does. First lap for Leffler, 29.66 for the zero. He'll be one and done right there, Mike. Uh, just a teeny bit quicker than what he ran in practice. Um, Matt Yoakum. Well, the guys everybody is waiting for now is Ryan Newman and Ken's that didn't really want to say how his car reacted. So your car very fast in practice, fifth quick. How much do you think you need to pick up, Ryan? Just enough. <laughs> uh, the auto dodge was pretty good at the one lap we got in that was pretty happy there at the end. Uh, we struggled for the, you know, basically about an hour and 40 minutes there in qualifying practice. Uh, we'll just see what the auto dodge can do. Uh, uh, it's a tough place to qualify, but it's fun at the same time. One of his favorite racetracks, and Larry Mack, you remember back the last year, he qualified on the outside of the front row, and what happened? I don't know if I remember now. You may have put me Final on the Final practice session, two minutes to go. It, yeah, it was like, the, I think the red and the black flag were already out, and uh, he wrecked over in turn two. You're exactly right, man. Here's Ward Burton, who is the track record holder. Set seven years ago, and the track had just been repaid. And like his brother, Jeff Burton, this group came down here and tested, but they worked on race runs. And this racetrack is so hard on tires, really the only way you can do that is put a fresh set of tires on, going back a 50-lap run. Ward's going to be 10th quickest on his first lap. Make a run, come in and put another set of tires. Jeff, they Jeff used 14 sets right of there. tires. Had a good lap before that. Heard him say he got just a little bit anyway, loose. Man. But that's $25,000 worth of tires is the moral of the story. Exactly. Darlington's been a good track for Ward Burton. He won once here in the spring, but then he has won the Southern 500 back uh, two years ago in 2001. Derek Cope, who is one of, as we said, one of the three drivers most in danger of missing out on a provisional start here and really needs to get into the top 36 in his friendlies restaurant, Chevrolet. I talked to Derek this morning. Really excited. You know, they've really been struggling with enough money to show up every week. They have a major announcement coming here in a couple of weeks on a sponsorship for all of the races next year. And he said, Larry, it's going to be enough money to do it right. Oh, that's great. He is 16th of 17 at 30.22 ahead of Fermi Sadler, but well down the list. So it looks like Cope will hope for a provisional start in the Southern 500. Matt Kenseth and Mark Martin are quickest of 17 so far. Taking all the air out of the wind tunnel for tonight, but beginning Monday and four nights a week, Dave Despain has news, interviews, and lots of opinions, including yours, when you call in at 1866 W Tunnel. The wind tunnel whips up every every night, Monday through Thursday at nine. He does get rowdy, I can tell you that <laughs> right now. <laughs> he needs to take a night or two off so he just catches breath because he goes at it pretty hard. Shelburne, Vermont's Kevin LePage in the Morgan McClure Pontiac this week, the Kodak number four. 29.86 is going to put the page 16th of 18. A lot of things happening up there at Morgan McClure. Tim Brewer has now completely taken over the duties of crew chief. Kevin may run this car a few more times this year. I know Johnny Sauter is going to be back in it at Richmond next week and in McLeod in a couple of weeks. Like I was going to comment, you talk about Kevin LePage, Derek Coke, Hermy Sadler. All these guys have picked up from their practice times, but unfortunately what they've picked up has not been enough to move them up in the qualifying line so far, and it's just really, really been tough. This is just another one of those characteristics of the racetrack. I think LePage will give this car a good run. I, th I think he's a very underrated driver among those who are hopeful of a full-time Winston Cup ride. Matt? Well, moonlighting a little bit here, helping out Greg Biffle's team push the car up on grid, and Greg, third quick in practice, but more importantly, how is the gelling and bonding and chemistry process going with your new crew chief, Doug Richard? 
Well, it's going okay right now. Uh, you know, it's uh, different working with somebody different. I worked with Randy for five years, so, uh, you know, we're just kind of getting used to each other. Uh, we were pretty decent in practice. Uh, we'll see what we can do here qualifying, but uh, I'm excited for this team. Uh, you know, it looks like we're going to be qualifying up front here. We run good here in the spring, so looking forward to another good run. One of his better racetracks, qualifying-wise, in NASCAR competition, a fifth, a first, and a 17th in the Winston Cup car here in the spring. New fastest qualifier. Got the pole right now, 29-12. Great job. That's Chad Knauss. Oh, yeah. I knew that was good. but <laughs> yes. <laughs> so good, I think I'll quit. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson, 29-12. He's sat on the track today. Might have been a touch left on throttle up off of four, but uh, you know, I was basing it on the run before where I was a little, little loose, and it took what I gave it, and I got down sooner and better, but I, I uh, could have maybe got a little more up off, but good job. Well, that's all you need to know about Jimmy Johnson's run. Well, he is quickest, but look who's next. I was going to say, he better get out of that car and grab a stopwatch quick, because here comes Mr. Qualifier himself, Ryan Newman, in this 12 car. He was fifth quickest in practice. But that's the thing about Darlington, Mike and Jeff. That driver knows. A lot of places we go, they don't know if it's a good lap. You know here at Darlington, almost like you would if you were at a road course. This is definitely uh, that's a driver's racetrack. And uh, as we said earlier, here comes Rocket Man. Let's see what this track will hold down. You see what he did, it went red getting in the corner. Jeff, what he did, he eased it in the corner. It went green in the middle of one and two because he picked that throttle up and stayed in it. But just as he come off, I sort of go back to red just for a second. Really started dancing around a little bit right there, but let's see how he gets through three and four and what it looks like when he gets back to the stripe. Newman trying to take the ball away from Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> He'll do it. <laughs> did it. 29-09. I mean, this year, 17 top 10 starts. Oh, me, as they say, now you see it, zero, nine, zero. now you don't. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what else can I do? I mean, you held oh, it for gosh. 29 seconds, Jimmy. Marty? Uh, 29 seconds count as a poll for you. <laughs> you had it for about 29 seconds. That's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair, is it? That's just not fair. No, I mean, at least if you could have beat me, you could beat me by a long ways, and it made me at least feel like I didn't have a shot at it. But before he went, I had a you know, great run. I thought maybe I left a little bit on the table up off of four, but, uh, you know, big improvement from where we were in practice. We were great in practice, but to pick up almost two tenths is a lot here, especially as hot as it's been. So very proud of those team. He's going to hit you if you don't watch out. Yeah. Now you can beat him up when he gets out of the car. At least, you know, at least pretend you're going to do I'll just let him stay strapped in and get after him then, you know. I have a little better shot. That works, got. doesn't it? Yeah, I've heard that that's worked before, so. <laughs> All right, nice run nonetheless. You know, sorry I didn't stick for the pole. Greg Biffle comes out as Johnson goes over to congratulate Ryan Newman. Doug Richard was named the new crew chief for the number 16, Randy Goss who climbed the ladder through the Craftsman Truck Series and Bush Series with Biffle and to the Cup Series, has been reassigned as the manager of Roush's uh, Bush Series program. And, Good run uh, for Greg. Yeah, they've responded with a fifth-place run of 29-30. And, of course, Doug Richard was Dale Earnhardt's crew chief in 1980 for his first Winston Cup championship. Brian Newman and Jimmy Johnson are quickest of 21. Chevy Ford atop the chart, Ryan Newman, Jimmy Johnson, and Matt Kenseth. Here is Kyle Petty, whose only top 10 start at Darlington came in 1990. Driving for Felix Sabatis, this will be his 45th Southern 500. No, 45th Darlington Winston Cup race. It'll be his 22nd Southern 500. And I tell you, race day has not been good to him. here in bottom and out right there as he got below the apron in turn one and two. It's like he drove it in pretty deep, but now he's paying the price on the exit of the corner. But in his past 19 starts here, no top 10 finishes. Kyle was 38th quickest in practice at a 29.92. He's losing a lot of time right there through three and four right there. And Larry, you know, that's one of that parts of the racetrack. You've got to get after it if you want to have a good qualifying run. And right now, Kyle's 19th at 29.82, and I'm thinking he'll be very happy with that. 
Just couldn't quite go back to the gas like you needed to. Marty with the rocket. Fresh, com fresh from a conversation with Jimmy Johnson, uh, he said it was not fair what you did to him. In his, eye, in in his, his eyes. In his view. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, good run for the all tall dodge. We really struggled when we unloaded this thing. The guys did an awesome job to uh, to make it better. I just hope it things, uh, hangs on for the pull. Is it fun to hit the perfect lap at Darlington, or is there such a thing? There, there, there is such a thing, and uh, uh, I, I don't know that we did it just then, but uh, it's it's a fun place to get around when the car's sticking. So far, fast enough to be on the pole, Matty. And the guy who was on the pole here in the spring, Elliot Sadler. Elliot, different race car, struggling a little bit. Yeah, Matt, we're definitely not as fast as we need to be in practice today. Uh, 18th quick, not that good. I got in the wall a little bit, but I think we're going to be a little bit better here in qualifying. I'm going to stand on it, try to keep it off the wall at turn two, and see what we got. So we want to put this M&M score to us in the top ten, and it's all up to the driver now. He was the gas man here in the spring, winning the pole 18th quick in practice. Jeff, wouldn't be the first time somebody brushed the wall in practice and improved the car. No, it would not be. I mean, you got to find out where that edge is, and to go fast around here, you got to flirt with the wall all the way around. You hear Bobby Labonte right there as he goes off into turn three again. One of those cars that's up against that chip to let him not know not to drive over drive the car. I tell you what, up till turn three, he was flirting with the pole. Our pace chase was great. Third for Bobby Labonte at a 29-23. Who could forget the 2000 Southern 500 when Labonte came from 37th starting spot to win it? It didn't lead a lot of laps that day, but he led the most important one. And there's the reason it was the last lap, as you can see. It was, uh, what do you call that when it's raining that hard, Jeff? That's a toad strangle. Yeah, a toad strangle. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Maycar is crew chief at that time, pretty excited about it. Even Bobby's young boy right there, he is excited. It's a good qualifying run for Bobby, who has four poles this year and already 12 top 10 starts. And here's Junior. A bit of scrape and rub there going off into turn one. I heard and seen that a lot today. He was 22nd quickest in practice. She's green headed down into turn three, though, guys. Back red. Continues to lose ground through three and four. Picked him back up a little bit right there. It's coming back just a hair. It's going to be a pretty good lap for that one. Eighth, 29 33. Hoping for his best Winston Cup start here in eight attempts, which was 10th in his first ever Cup race here in spring of 2000. Another one of those drivers who picked it up right there during his qualifying run, uh, Marty Snyder. And one guy, Greg Biffle, six, but uh, you're a pretty disappointing guy to be six. Why? Well, we ran uh, the Granger Ford was pretty good in practice. Uh, we did, ran a 27, 29-27, uh, and thought I could run a little better than that. Didn't back it up, ran 29-30, but uh, we'll end up being about 10th or 12th. It's cool enough off here, so probably a bunch of these guys end up beating us, but uh, it's, uh, I thought we had a chance in the fall, and uh, not, not so today. Greg says cooling off. That's not good for those guys who went early, is it, guys? No, because when she starts cooling off, these things start really getting some speed. They gain a lot of grip. You see Elliot Sadler in the 38 M&M's car here on his qualifying run. Still green to the middle three and four right there. Now going back to red. He's driving for the team that holds the race qualifying record. Set here in 99 with Kenny Irwin, and he's third fastest. He'll be happy with that, wow. considering how he said that car was driving. And, uh, of course, the pole sitter from the spring and Todd Parrott, back on board helping this race team and I was very impressed with my conversation with Todd Perry this morning. He said, I didn't come in here to take Raymond Fox's job as crew chief. He said, I'm actually looking at it for co-crew chiefs. I just want to help this race team. Let's check with Matt. One of the most finishes all season performed by Ricky Craven here in the spring. Same race car, chassis 32, car 32. 12 fast in the practice. You got to be excited about that. You were 31st here in the spring. Yeah, it's true. It's one of the things we knew we could improve on was qualifying, and you know I think we're heading in that direction. It's just a good race car, you know, and I guess several of them. But uh, this car is kind of special this week. It's painted up Give Kids the World, the uh, fifth anniversary of us doing that with in conjunction with the the village Give Kids the World. And you know we got a lot to race for. The last 
Southern 500 on Labor Day and, uh, you know, coming back here, having one in March, a lot of things to be excited about. I mean, you can't even dream about a finish like that. That's something that doesn't come along very often. You know, that was something. That was spectacular, and I appreciate that. And my kids going to Victory Lane with me, all the, all the things that made up a great day. I try winning by two miles or something, you know, maybe <laughs> see what that feels like, you know. I'm looking forward to it. It's a great place to race. And uh, it looks like we're going to be sold out. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's one of the big ones, and uh, I'd sure love to win the Southern 500. Terry Labonte was green light until he came off turn number four, and was third, buddy. Damn good job. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That lacked about 500 feet of being a full winning run. Yes, it did. But I, I do think this racetrack is cooling down just a little bit. I mean, Terry had been pretty good in practice, but I think we're going to start seeing these speeds really start coming around. But I'm going to tell you what, Mike, while Ricky was being interviewed, we were watching that replay of that last lap in the spring between him and Kurt Busch. If that didn't excite you, go watch Lon Bowen or Croquet because yeah. you're not going to get excited. Check your pulse. I'll tell you, Terry Labonte gets my vote for the biggest turnaround uh, in this and maybe any other season. Boy, they have really come on strong, he and Jim Long. Marty? With brother Bobby the Bonnie, currently fifth, and the quote on the radio is, this is a wreck looking for a place to happen. Is that your, in reference to your car? Yeah, that was about a mile point three something, I think, is what it was. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we just, um, I just can't get a good feel for qualifying. Lap. I say that last time here, I was good in practice, and I slowed down for qualifying. This time, at least I picked up. So I think that was a plan in practice. I didn't go as fast. Maybe so I didn't go as fast, so I go faster for qualifying. But just didn't, you know, it just seemed like it, as fast as I go, I mean, I just felt like I was a little bit out of control with more than I wanted to be. But um, guys did a good job. Uh, we came down here. We didn't test. Came down here with a little different thought process we had here last time. And, and obviously, we've already qualified. We're going to end up better than we were last time. So hopefully, we'll still end up in a good spot. We're getting beat right now by a few guys. But if we'll end up with a good qualifying spot, that'd be great for uh, Sunday's race. We give a high five to Big Brother. He just uh, beat you out there on the track. Dave Blaney and the Jasper Ford clocks in ninth, 29-30. Back here in the spring, Blaney had his only top five finish of the season so far. He finished third. Distinguished media panel has always decided who is American Motorsports Driver of the Year, and now you, the fan, will help decide. Log on to speedtv.com now to cast your vote for this quarter's nominees. 2003 Driver of the Year. Joe Nemechek will be the 28th driver to take time. We have 44 cars here for 43 spots. Nemechek driving for Larry Hedrick started fourth here in 1994, his best qualifying ever in Darlington. He was 32nd quickest in practice. He had a struggle just a little bit this morning. Picked it up a little bit, Larry, but again, coming off the of turn four right there, his car really looked like it was getting away from him, got loose, and he couldn't get back to the throttle right there, and had to kind of squeeze up out of it to get it back to start finish line. And anytime you have to come out of the throttle or coming off the corner, you're going to lose a lot of time. So Nemechek right now is 17th. Marty? On the radio after his lap, Elliot Sadler was praising the crew, but kind of beating yourself up. What happened? I just uh, drove into turn three way too hard. The guys made some great adjustments. We want that good in practice and uh, just drove it so hard into three. I won't know way it was going to turn, but just really wanted to get all, make up all the real estate I could. But uh, definitely my fault. Definitely had a car fast enough for the pole, but definitely stepped on my foot. So uh, I got to make it up to him on Sunday. One week with crew chief Todd Parrott and Raymond Fox kind of doing the co-crew chief thing and uh, paying dividends already. Thanks, Marty. Here is the driver who's on the go or go home plan. It's the Harris Dodge of Larry Foyt. If Foyt makes it into the top 36, he will race in the Southern 500. If he is not one of the 36 fastest, he will be the one car that goes home. And we were explaining this earlier because the 50 numbers on this car, remember, provisionals are based on owner points, not driver points. And it's based on not who owns it, but the car number itself. Now, if they had the 14 number on this car here, which Larry run a lot in the first part of the season, they would probably be eligible for a provisional. But because of that reason, he just about has to be in the top 36. 24th for Larry Foyt, 29.69, and it's questionable. He's going to have to beat, I think, three more cars mm -hmm. uh, to be assured of being in the top 36. 
So it's uh, Larry Foyt or Hermie Sadler. Uh, unofficially, of course, will be the one driver who fails to make the Southern 500. So it's not going to be determined on Larry's qualifying run, but rather on the drivers who follow. Steve Park at a track that has been really tough for Steve Park's career in the Bush race here two years ago under caution. Something causes Park's car to veer to the left. Larry Foyt was trying to move up to the inside to line up for the restart. Slammed into Park's driver's door and put Steve on the stretcher and out of racing for some time. And the speculation was that was right after the red flag. The speculation was that he did not have the steering wheel clipped back in place and then it came off over there under caution coming off turn two. You know, Mike and Jeff, Steve's gonna go down tomorrow night to Myrtle Beach as a car owner to watch his dad, Bob, drive a modified car in the Smart Series. Can we go? Sure. No. No, we got something we got to do tomorrow night, guys. We're busy. Yeah, yeah. we do. Yep. Yeah, congratulations to old DW and Harry Gant that's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame here tomorrow night into the Darlington Country Club. And Steve's going to be 21st quickest on uh, his one and only lap. 29.57. The National Motorsports Press Association Hall of Fame located on the backstretch here at Darlington and open year-round along with uh, what has been known as the Joe Weatherly Museum. You're invited to come and visit and see all the drivers who've been honored. Let's go down downstairs, Marty. Terry, it's a lot of fun to come to the track when your car's running well, isn't it? And if you could have do this again, you think you might have had a shot at the pole? Well, we were we were close there, and that was a good lap for us. We picked up from practice. Uh, I thought I messed up just a little bit in turn one, but it was still a good lap, and uh, we'll sure take it and go on. And I think we've got an awful good car for Sunday. And uh, this is a uh, this is a tough racetrack, and uh, you know you got to stay out of trouble here. And uh, pit strategy is not going to be much of a problem because you know you're going to get four tires every time. So uh, it, it, uh, we're looking for for a good day Sunday. Very first Winston Cup win came right here at Darlington. Matt? Well, 13th and 14th in practice, Casey Mears and Jimmy McMurray. Your teammate's going to roll off right in front of you. Are you going to be able to get any kind of information from when he runs? No, probably not. Um, we struggled a little bit earlier on, just really loose, and uh, put our last set of, our second set of stickers on and picked up pretty good time-wise, but still didn't drive real good, so... I don't feel very good today either. I think I got the flu. So um, if we can just go out and get an average run, we'll be good. And this is not the weekend that you want to be sick either, is it? No, Sterling told me this is one of the worst races of the year. So hopefully uh, go to the doctor tonight, get some uh, some medicine, make me feel better. And I'm going to back away from the window here so I don't get the flu either. Ricky Craven, eighth fastest on his run, 29-29 for the Tide Pontiac. Be back with more butt pull qualifying from Darlington. Sunday experience more in car camera action with NASCAR in car on in demand. In car camera channels with virtual dashboards, real time data, and live team audio. Call 188 Sports In to order the package on digital camera. New look for Jeremy Mayfield. Uh, Mountain Dew joins with Dodge on the side of the number 19 this week. Yep, and in honor of the Mountain Dew 500 here. Unique little old color right there, but I have a very special place for Mountain Dew in my heart from 1981 and 1982. Darrell Walter. That's right, you bled green that year, did you? I know? surely did. And won green at the end of both of those years. <laughs> yeah, I surely <laughs> did. Enjoyed that. Oh, Jeremy oh, we gets got in loose. the wall off turn two. Stays in the throttle though, Larry. Big still green. green though, still green. He got all of turns one and two. Starting to come back here off turn four a little bit. This yep. is going to be a good lap for Jeremy, considering he scraped the ball off turn two. Ah, uh, 13th. It's like he lost a lot of ground off turn four on the first part of the straightaway coming to take the uh, white flag, and he's pretty much going to be one and done. And just to make the fans understand, especially if you just tuned in, this is a normal qualifying session. Everybody has two laps of qualifying. Here you're going to see Jeremy coming off turn two. We've seen this so many times today. You just run out of racetrack, and that was a pretty hard lick. Wow, that was a good hard lick right there. I'm surprised he got a good lap as he did. But what's happening is this racetrack, it's so abrasive, it's so hard on the tires. All of the grip, the good grip is when the tires are new on that first lap. That's the reason you don't see anyone even thinking about as hot as it is taking that second lap. It's not going to be quicker. Mayfield was the pole sitter here for the 2000 Southern 500. 
Todd Bodine, who bumped and crashed his way to a win here in March in the Bush Series, battling Jamie McMurray. Now in the National Guard, Ford goes on the clock. Making his 13th Darlington start on Sunday. He was 19th quickest in practice. It was green all the way to turn three, starting to lose a lot of ground now in the middle of three and four, picking the throttle left off turn four. Still going to be a pretty good qualifying lap for Todd. 20th. The lap of 29.47, identical to Joe Nemechek's lap. I'm going to tell you what, this is a tight, tight qualifying session. I mean, right now, Ryan Newman is on the pole at a 29.09. And right now, uh, you take, for instance, Ward Burton is 22nd at a 29.49. And here's Matt. Jimmy Spencer qualified fourth here in the spring. I bet you couldn't wait to get to Darlington, could you? <laughs> Not as hot as it is, too, but uh, it's awesome. You know, take a week off. Uh, sure didn't want to. And uh, But, you know, NASCAR has rules and you have to abide by them so uh, you know I made a mistake and it's over with and I'm sorry for what happened but uh, you know we're at Darlington and, and this is another sad case the last Southern 500 and uh, it's just special this racetrack and to watch Kyle Yarbrough, Bobby Allison, Buddy Baker, just David Pearson just it's awesome. Uh, Bill Elliott won the first ever Winston Million and a lot of things have changed in our sport and I guess that it bothers me a little bit you know uh, maybe I need to Learn to change a little bit quicker with them. How tough to sit on the couch last weekend, Jimmy? <laughs> well, I got a different perspective now of, of uh, the TV deal. You know, a lot of people are criticizing the TV package. And, uh, you know, I was sort of one of them. And uh, when I watch it on TV, I realize there's so much going on at the event, so much happening that uh, you can't see what you want to see because the TV producers pick what they have to pick. And sometimes they don't pick the right stuff. but. Uh, I wouldn't want to be a producer because they got their hands full, especially a track like Bristol. You guys do a great job. And you've been a pit reporter before. I've been a pit reporter. It's it's tough. It's definitely hard. Well, it's good to see him back it behind is. the wheel of Mongo. But I'm going to tell you what. Sam Flood, who's producing this qualifying show, the NBC producer, and Neil Goldberg, our producer on Fox, you couldn't give me their job for all the money in the world. I wouldn't go quite that far, Larry. Casey uh, Mears. <laughs> Casey Mears, 29-43. Uh, Spencer was absent at Bristol, but I understand that uh, sales at his souvenir trailer were up 40%. I even saw several uh, Jimmy Spencer for president signs in Bristol last weekend. <laughs> well, at least for governor of California, why not? Well, Jimmy talks about he wants to progress a little bit. He needs to get rid of that open face helmet and get him a full face helmet like the rest of these guys are running and make me a whole lot happier about it. Jamie McMurray in the uh, Haviland Dodge. We got a look uh, last week at Bristol at uh, the future look of that car. And I was glad to see it because the, uh, the star there has been shrinking, it seems, race by race. And next year, it's going to be full blown across the whole hood like, like it used to be. Just like it was in 1991, 1992 with Davey Allison. Jamie's going to be 50 quickest there on this qualifying run. Good run for Jamie last week, though, at Bristol, finishing third. Great run. Brian Newman is quickest, Jimmy Johnson, Terry Labonte, Elliott Sadler. Welcome back. Welcome back to Darlington. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds and Jeff Hammond. Marty Snyder and Matt Yoakum on pit road as Christian Fittipaldi makes his qualifying attempt. First time he's been to Darlington. First time he's been to Darlington, guys. And I walked over to him as he's getting ready to go out and make his first practice run this morning. Now, he did come there and test. I said, what do you think about Darlington? He looked up at me. He smiled big. And he said, unique. <laughs> Unique. <laughs> One word. One word. <laughs> Unique. And that's a pretty good way to sum it up Darlington as far as uh, the track is too tough to tame. Qualified seventh of Michigan, his best run of the season. And this is going to be a good lap. 20th, 29-44. Solid in the field. Cheerios Dodge. I'm really beginning to think he's starting to have fun. He's starting to figure these cars out, what he can and cannot do with them. And uh, I mean, he's a very... Uh, energetic young man, and he's a lot of fun to watch and talk to, especially after he's run a race or two. Yeah, I mean, he picked up over three tenths. 
So 36 of the 44 drivers have been out, and here's Mongo. Mr. Excitement, Jimmy Spencer, who provoked uh, quite a reaction from the crowd last week at Bristol, Tennessee. Free Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Lost puppy. Lost puppy. <laughs> There are a few funny ones we can't show you. And I'm going to tell you what, you ought to see the fans' reaction right now. I don't think any of these standing up. Are sitting oh, down. Oh, no. Uh oh. Bad dog, no biscuit. Mm. Just got away from him off turn four. That was Tommy Baldwin, you hear. The right front is locked up. And Spencer will take a provisional. Darn it. I hate that for Jimmy because he was so pumped up about coming to this racetrack and, and getting qualified for this race. Now, things are going to be a little bit tough for him, but knowing his ad attitude right now, he'll be positive about it. He'll come back and he'll Tommy Ball with him. I load a backup car and he'll get the job done come Sunday. This is the same car that he actually ran at Michigan a couple of weeks, weeks ago and uh, knocked the nose off in the garage area. Nose off the car. Yeah. Glad you clarified that. Coming to take the green, there you see it. Got loose with him, he corrected it, overcorrected, and it just came back around again with him. And that's a pretty hard lick. That, that like you say, Mike, provisional land and probably backup car. Yeah. Kind of killed the right front of that one. Which doesn't take much. Well, these drivers know with just doing one lap of qualifying, I think we were talking about this earlier, that that speed can so much be dictated by how you get through three and four coming to take the green. You need to really build that speed coming off turn four, and it just got away from Jimmy. He, he was trying so hard to carry that speed momentum through that corner. Jeff, did you hear it sound like something something drug on the racetrack? Is that a word? Dragged on the racetrack just prior to that car getting out of shape, like like something bottomed out there to cause him to lose control. It very easily could have, Mike. I didn't quite hear it, but at the same time, right where he was picking the throttle up is where that would, normally would happen. Well, you're running the left front so soft here, Mike, sometimes if you snatch it back right, it'll bottom the left front out. It would be interesting to interview Jimmy to see if uh, if it just came around with him or if he does think maybe something broke on it or whatever. Let's look and listen. I think the sound that you heard was after the car got loose and he tried to correct. Like Larry said, you hear it bottom out again. It came around. Marty. A lot of noise there on that wreck, Jimmy. What happened? Just lost it, you know. Uh, drove down in the corner, got a little loose, and put the power back to it. When it caught, it was headed the wrong way. So uh, trying to sit on the pole, and that's what happened. Just sit on the wall instead. Pretty good crunch, uh, obviously. Backup car. Oh yeah, there's no question. That hit hard at Darlington. Yep. All right, Jimmy Spencer will be in the backup car. A lot of damage to the seven car, Matt. And yeah, Michael Waltrip's car just now finally showed up. Michael buckling in. Michael, mid 20s in practice. How many changes did you guys make? A whole lot. The car wasn't the, the way I needed to feel. And uh, fortunately, we have the, the Aaron's Dream Machine here and Bobby Kennedy and Slugger. They talk a lot. And uh, the Bush car was off as well. And I think Slugger helped Bobby get that one squared away. And Bobby helped Slugger. And I love, that's my favorite thing is the way we uh, work back and forth on these two cars. When I qualified the Bush car, I just totally uh, drove like a granny because it was so loose in practice and the car would have stuck if I had went harder. So now that's given me a lot of confidence as I get ready to race the Napa Chevy around the egg-shaped oval here in Darlington, South Carolina. For the final Labor Day Southern 500. Mike? You know, you got to admire a fellow who can uh, climb out of a car that he has just sent to the great BFI in the sky and, and have a little laugh about it. You know, trying to sit on the pole and sat on the wall instead. There you see his crew unloading their backup car, and this car pretty much will be race ready. I mean, these these teams now, that backup car, you have to be ready to pull it out and be able to hit the racetrack with it right away, although they'll have the rest of the afternoon and in the morning to get ready for the final practice session. But it's a good thing is he was going for it, and that was the main thing. Now, here's a guy that's going to be going for it, I'm sure. That's Jeff Gordon. A lot of talk in the garage. He's going to be strong here for qualifying and the race. Four-time pole sitter and the only 
the driver ever to win four straight Southern 500s. He has five total. That ties him with Cale Yarbrough for most wins. He's green right now. Turns red right off into turn three. Let's see if he can get it back as he picks the throttle up. Yeah, starting to really lose a lot of time. Starting to come back a little bit. I don't think it'll come back enough, though. But, yeah, his average start here in all of his 21 starts is under six, like 5.95. 13th with that lap, 29-36 for Gordon. It's like all of it was lost right over in the middle of three and four and off. Everybody else, so, just take the one lap. so 38 of 44 drivers have made their runs, and going home, it appears, will either be Larry Foyt or Hermie Sadler. Sadler is the slowest of the drivers who've completed their runs. Foyt right now is 32nd with six drivers yet to go. He needs to be faster than three of them. The problem is it's six good drivers. You got Ricky Rudd, Sterling Marlin, Michael Waltrip. Here you see Ricky Rudd in the 21 car. Dale Jarrett, Robbie Gordon, and Rusty Wallace. Pretty strong players. Rudd, the outside pole sitter, driving his own Ford here in 1995. One win in 53 Darlington starts, 25 top 10 finishes. This will be his 54th race at Darlington. I think it's his 54th consecutive, consecutive race. That's right. Boy, he had a good race car last week at Bristol. I think he by far had the best race car and uh, got into the back of the 88 car. Dale Jarrett knocked the radiator out. They had to make repairs. and uh, But he that's probably the best run they've had all year long by far. They were very consistent. I talked to Pat Tyson, and he was just basically crying the blues because he knew that they had an outside chance of winning that race, which he won that race earlier a couple years ago with Elliott Sadler. That Pat really has a good setup for Bristol. Doesn't have a bad one for here in Darlington either. I'm going to tell you what, we're seeing Ricky Rudd do something I don't know that we've seen anybody do. He's going to run that second lap. His first lap, he was 27th quickest at a 29.51. Don't think this is going to be quicker, though. No, he's going to slow down over four tenths to a 29.94. That just shows you how much give up there is from lap one to lap two. Five drivers to go. Ryan Newman and Jimmy Johnson are quickest. That is what you call a Darlington stripe on the side of Jeremy Mayfield's car as some crew members try and bang out the right side of that Dodge. Jeremy, I think you found the end of the property line over in turn two, didn't you? Yeah, we're in a real estate over there somewhere, but man, this uh, Mountain Dew Dodge has been fast all day, and uh, I just hate it because uh, it's a great car, and uh, you know, we had a good shot at the pole, and we're going for it, and I thought I was just going to brush a little bit. You know, we got a little loose and uh, kind of chased a little bit, but uh, that's a little bit more of a brush. It hit pretty hard, but hopefully uh, they'll get it fixed and we don't have to go to back up. Here. So, yeah. He says that's our best car. We're going to bang it out and get ready for practice tomorrow. Guys? Sterling Marlin, another driver who had a strong shot to win at Bristol last Saturday night. But he got bonked by Kurt Busch and dumped into the wall instead. Sterling was 24th quickest in practice. Still does not have a top five finish this year. It's hard to believe. Twice a pole sitter here. Swept the pole for both races in 92. 13th quickest at a 29.35. Matt? Rusty Wallace won the last Riverside race, the first New Hampshire race, now trying to win the last Labor Day Southern 500. But first off, the track temperatures dropped about 12 degrees, Rusty, from the start of qualifying till now. That's got to be an advantage. That can't be hurting anything, that's for sure, and I'm glad I'm last. Last week I was second, and boy, that got me in trouble, got me in a wreck, and got me in everything. But uh, hopefully this will help us a little bit. We weren't great in practice, but we weren't bad either. Rusty Wallace trying to win the pole here. Michael Waltrip. The Napa Chevy. His best qualifying run here was his first race here for DEI when he started sixth in the spring race of 2001. It'll be his 37th Whoa. Darlington race. And wow. That's Big as catch. loose as you can get without hitting it. Big catch right there. But you heard him say they put the setup underneath the Bush car into this race car, and he talked about being loose with the Bush car. He's loose right now, too, Greg. He has his hands full. But he's in that throttle. Well, he said he drove the Bush car like Granny, not this one. But there you see losing all that ground down the back stretch. That don't mean that he's off in motor. He just did not get off turn two. Had the soft pedal off that corner. 
just couldn't carry any momentum, and it just kills you down that back straight. It's not going to be a very good lap at all for Michael. He's going to be 37th quickest, so he's in provisional land right after his qualifying run. He definitely had his hands full. Whew. He didn't want no part of a second lap. Bad news for Michael. Good news for Larry Foyt. He is 34th. This is with, terrible. With three drivers to no go. No good driving at all. Sideways ever, every time I stepped on the gas. Got the... You don't have to tell me. <laughs> you gonna say, I don't say big amen, brother. Dale Jarrett in the UPS Ford. He did a good job getting that car back to the garage here. Yes. Peace. Dale has three Darlington wins all in the spring race. But he has been the victory lane in the Southern 500 because his dad, Ned, won it in 1965. He was a little younger then. You don't say. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Nine top five finishes in the last 13 Darlington races. He was in there working that wheel pretty good, too. This is a car that ran so well at Michigan a couple of weeks ago when they had to pit for fuel there near the end of the race. Kind of a new, different type of generation of the in-house chassis. I was talking to Sean Parker a little earlier, the guy that you've worked with before at Yates's. Bob, uh, Bob Bill, Riley. Bill, Bob and Bill Riley. Riley. Yeah. are back over there at uh, Yates Racing right now trying to help get this thing turned back around. And uh, Dale Jarrett's 19th right now. Sean Parker told me, he said, all they're trying to do right now is win races. Marty? Sterling Marlin, uh, not a bad lap, but you can never hit the perfect lap here at Darlington, can you? Yeah, we run race runs uh, a lot today, and uh, it's hard to get your rhythm right here. <laughs> we run race runs, race runs, and, and qualify, and uh, we tighten the car for a little bit. We still want to know if we got a real good one and two, and it just got two loose in three and four, but uh, we had had a real good uh, session with race runs. Car's real consistent. Uh, don't slow down much, and, uh, you know, that's what we had down there one a couple years ago, so hopefully uh, we do it again with Coors Light Dodge. You had an outstanding car last week at Bristol. Take me through what happened with Kurt Busch. I guess the accelerator hung. I don't know. <laughs> and I hadn't talked to him yet. Did he Did he hit you? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, he got against us a little bit, turned us around. Uh, you know, it's Bristol. Uh, everybody hits each other. It's hard to, hard to run if they're not hit anybody. All right, Sterling Marlin, so far uh, 13th fastest out on the track here at Darlington. Robbie Gordon. You might know that he'd be the first to bring a trend from California. A lot of the Winston Cup drivers have unique uh, street cars. But Toyota has a new brand called Scion. It's not even sold in the eastern U.S. yet. It's only available in California. They have two cars, the XA and the XB. He's got an XB. It's, it's hard to describe. It looks like the box it came in. But he's already got it tricked out with dark windows and big chrome wheels and a big fat exhaust pipe and fender skirts. And uh, you'll recognize it in the garage. It's like nothing else down there. You know he wasn't going to leave it long. He had to work yeah. on it and change it. And he's <laughs> right. going to be 25th quickest on his qualifying run. Four top ten starts in 2003 for Robbie Gordon. So he is 25th. Are you trying to say, Mike, that a little bit of that California breed is coming out in him? Well, he's a trendsetter. Okay. Sure. And that puts Larry Foyt to the bubble. So right now, it all depends on what Rusty Wallace does. If Wallace makes it into the top 36, as he should, if he has a run without incident, it's Larry Foyt who's headed home. If Rusty has to take a provisional, that means Hermie Sadler goes to the house. Yeah, and Rusty was 28th quickest in practice. And uh, as you hear him talking, the racetrack's cooling down just a little bit. And that was giving Rusty a little bit of confidence. Hard wreck for Rusty last week at Bristol. Wow. Just a victim, nowhere to go. Uh, that was his fourth DNF of 2003. And the first time that he's had two DNFs in a row since, like, back in the mid-90s. Ooh, trouble there. And he was hard into that corner in green light. But like he may have overdrove the entrance of the corner just a little bit. Just yeah. a little bit. He was trying, he's trying real hard to get up right now and see his teammate, Ryan Newman, who's sitting on the pole right now. Looking for his first ever front row start at Darlington. He's had four starts from row two. It'll be a decent lap for Rusty. It's probably going, oh boy, it's 34th quickest, but the bad news is that knocks Larry Foyt out of this field. Rusty's going for two. Must have felt something that makes him think he can run quicker than he did the first lap. I don't think it's going to happen because you can already see he's a half a second off going off into turn three and continuing to grow. Pretty loose off turn four right there. He's got his hands full. Slows down almost three tenths, so he 
he's going to be 34th quickest. So the bad news is Larry Ford in the 50 car, he will be going home. We'll come back and hear from our pole sitter and give you the starting lineup for the Mountain Dew Southern 500 after this. Well, the debriefing down here at Darlington is going on between Jimmy Johnson and Ryan Newman. Still not fair what he did to you? No, I don't think Bobby thinks it is either. Do you think it's fair that he took that pull away from you like that? No. <laughs> yeah, this is five of these things. I mean, six, yeah, spread it. <laughs> spread the wealth. Come on, Newman. Uh, no, I want to thank all my guys. Uh, you know, we both had a good lap, no doubt. Um, just uh, one of those things. Uh, the sun was uh, hot all day. I think everybody had an equal chance to qualify today, and uh, just look forward to the Southern 500. Biggest advantage to starting up front here at Darlington. That's it. What is the biggest advantage? <laughs> that, is, that is it. Clean air. I mean, uh, there ain't many wrecks that happen in front of you when you're up front. And, uh, and I just want to, uh, you know, thank Dodge, All Tell Mobile One, Sony. Uh, I got to say thanks to uh, Winners, uh, Winners, I think it's Win Winners Butcher House in Greenville, Ohio. They send us some awesome pork chops uh, week in, week out. Got to take care of the people that feed you, right? There you go. And Ryan Newman on the pole once again. What a shock, guys. Got a sixth pole, going for his sixth win of the season on Sunday. Wow, he's seventh in the points. But I'm going to tell you what, how about Terry Labonte, Mike? You I were love it. About qualified third. I mean, more fitting than the, the place that he made his first Winston Cup start and got his first Winston Cup win. What are you talking about? Look back there in row number three. Look who is out there on the outside pole. Matt Kenseth, our pole setter. I mean, our uh, the point leader. He got him another good starting position. Better watch out for Matt Kenseth come race day. Qualifying's coming to life. It has. I look back through the top 20. Anchored there by Tony Stewart. And back through the top 30. Nice run for Christian Fittipaldi in his first try here. Saw, this unique racetrack. Yes. Saw Dale Jarrett there on row 10. We're hearing that as he went from to go to fourth gear, his transmission went to second gear. Oops. Really breaks your concentration. Provisional land. Michael Waltrip, Jimmy Spencer, Kyle Petty back there with Kevin LePage, Derek Cope, and Hermie Sadler gets the final spot in the field. Larry Foyt heads home. For all of us at Speed Channel, congratulations to Ryan Newman on his sixth pole of the year. Don't forget trackside tonight.